Good evening. Good evening from me. Good evening from him. Good evening. Good evening from me. Good evening from him. Yes, that's right. Welcome to the Midnight Hour, Friday's edition. And as you may know, what we're doing on a Friday, after we've just had our time, we want to spend a little time sharing communion together. So if you can stay with us for that, that would be really nice. It's it's just so good to remember the Lord. And I know many of you may do in your churches over the weekend. I mean, a lot of churches don't, of course. And so it is good. I've been used to doing it on a weekly basis. So it's 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 nice on a Friday night just to be able to break bread together. Okay, right. Well, let's, I trust you've had a good day. Uh, it's been a nice day here in Scotland. The uh, sun has been shining here. We've seen the showers, but they've not really been here. And so I went and did my weekly shop or two weekly shopping actually today. Uh, I went to one place that was so large. I, I thought, oh dear, I'm going to go somewhere else. Unfortunately, I got a place. Well, little as it was, uh, at, at Al Aldi's, Aldi's. I got to Aldi's and there was nobody there. So I went in, did your shopping, not quite as much choice in that place, but uh, when I came out, what a long line there was. So I was just very grateful for that. I mean, really, because uh, sometimes I know in the lines and the queues, it can be a long line. I've been watch, seeing some of the lines in, in some places in other parts of the world, three, three kilometres, one of them I saw tonight. So, yes, Mickey, I know. And that's <laughs> right, he says he got some bananas. Yes, yeah, so so that's good. Anyway, okay, let's have it's always good. I, I love to have a praise song as we're going to be thinking tonight and uh, of uh, John's Gospel, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible tonight. And so, as a celebration of that, I thought I'd wear the tie, the, the, the my tie, which has the verse from that chapter, which maybe you can just kind of make out. Maybe you can. Uh, I know, I feel a bit old-fashioned because I'm a bit of a time on a light all the time. Right, okay, what about this one? Just to uh, begin tonight. Okay. Uh, Mickey, do you want to come? Oh, well, no. All right, Mickey, you can have a banana. Right, let's do. Come on and celebrate His gift of love We will celebrate The Son of God who loved us and gave us life. I'll shout your praise, O King. You give us joy, nothing else can bring. We give to you our offering in celebration praise. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing. Celebrate and sing to the King. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing to the King. It's all to do with you seeing the words and me speaking to the microphone. Right, so we again. Come on and celebrate. His gift of love we will celebrate, the Son of God who loved us and gave us life. I'll shout your praise, O King. You give us joy, nothing else can bring. We give to you our offering in celebration praise. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, Celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing to the King. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing to the King. Come on and celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing to the King. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, celebrate and sing, celebrate and sing 
to the king. Good. And it is always good to celebrate. And, you know, sometimes I always remember one of my first experiences uh, as a, in a church, actually. It was in a Methodist church. I think I was probably about 11. Went to a Methodist church. I'm afraid uh, uh, I used to do my homework on the back seat, basically. But I always remember we were singing something. I think this is my story. This is my song. I was singing that song and I wasn't a Christian and I really wasn't interested but what struck me because the church would just go through the motions of doing a service and then we were singing a chorus like I think it probably was this is my story this is my song you know from the song Blessed Assurance and then they sang it and then suddenly this old man <laughs> maybe uh he suddenly started singing the chorus again. And I thought, of, what? What? That's not done. That's not really done. Because spontaneously, he was singing the chorus out of the joy that he had in his heart. And I thought, it really impressed me. It struck me. Wow. Spontaneously, just worshipping God. And I thought, he's got something, that old man. And he certainly had. And I didn't understand it for quite a few years later. To understand, he had been, as we're going to hear tonight, so I'm going to use the term quite a bit tonight, just to help us get it into our system. He had been born again. Born again. And so, before we just have a look at the news, so I, I've got this old song, which asks the question. And because we have to think about it, because so often people talk about two types of Christian. They talk about a Christian and then there's a born again Christian as though they are two different things. And lots of people think that a born again Christian is somebody who's kind of a bit way out there and a bit radical, really. They know to get they need to loosen up and, uh, you know, not be too. A bit, you know what I mean, a bit out there, really, a bit, you know, slightly embarrassing, you see. And so people, to, being in these kind of two types of Christian. So anyway, we have to ask our question. We do at times. And the Bible says it's good for us to find ourselves. And that's what we can do as we sing this song. And it goes like this. It goes, do you know that you've been born again? Do you know that you've been born again? Does the spirit dwell within, bearing witness that you've been cleansed from every sin and stain? Are you ready if the Lord should come, or today your soul should claim? Do Can you face eternal years, free from doubt and dread and fears? Do you know? No. Know that you've been born again. again. Do you know that you've been born again? Do you know that you've been born again? Does the spirit dwell within, bearing witness that you've been cleansed from every sin and stain? Are you ready if the Lord should come? For today your soul should claim. Can you face eternal years free from doubt and dread and fears? Do you know, know, know that you've been born again? Again, it's a very interesting and very important question. And as we'll see later, the Lord Jesus told a very good, because he was a good man, a very good religious man that he needed to be born again and it is such a an important question to think about this and so we'll come back to that in a few minutes but as we normally do let's just have a look at the news and sometimes i must admit as what as i, as I look at the different headlines each night a lot of it is very repetitious now, I mean, it's um, as we shall see in the figures just in a moment. 
the sad thing is, especially here in the UK, the, the cases are climbing. I mean, it could be that we might be the highest incidence Just as we, the, the breaking news or tonight was the amazing thing was that the United Kingdom had said that they were going to by today or yesterday uh, have 100,000 testings available. And most people thought this is not going to happen, especially when early in the week it was only up to maybe 18 and then 50. But to make the target is actually quite an achievement. But the main problem and to be able to get on, really on top of the virus here as they have done in other countries is to get the testing so everybody everybody can be tested that is the key and then people know that they can know if they can go back to work they can know if they're vulnerable it gives people peace of mind takes away a lot of the fear so it is incredibly important that the testings accelerate exponentially it, it, it really is um, so just um just some of the headlines oh yeah i wanted to do this for you tonight we are now or we were a moment ago in the first of may and may has a blessings we use the word may a lot so i want to I kind of copied this a little bit and I've just adopted it myself a little bit. So welcome to May. Yes. So. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord take care of you. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you find comfort. May you find healing. May you have courage. May you have peace. May you have joy. May you have love. May you be blessed. And that is summarized in the blessing, the ironic blessing, which of course says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. So welcome to May. And may all these things be yours in Jesus name. OK, so I thought I wrote that down earlier because I liked it and it really blessed me. Trust will be blessed with you too. Pass it on if it does. Right. OK. Um, oh, yeah. I'll mention this now. Maybe I'll try and remember it at the end because this is important. I noticed there are two major prayer initiatives happening tomorrow. One is in America uh, coming out of. Um, the revival that is happening in Tennessee. You may remember just before the coronavirus broke, there was a real move of God's spirit in Tennessee. I mean, hundreds were coming to the Lord. And this prayer meeting is called World Prayer Together. Um, and it is tomorrow, starting, I'm not sure what time, in the States. So that's, uh, that is tomorrow, but also tomorrow, here in the UK, David Hathaway, who is a real man of God, well into his 80s, his energy is supernatural. He has arranged a day of prayer, an online day of prayer. And I think it's a video as well, which uh, starts at 11 o'clock and it's been streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. So that's two major initiatives happening tomorrow for prayer, which is absolutely wonderful. Right. OK, so of course, being May Day too, there are lots of rallies still, even though the lockdown continues, but some large, some just quite small because of the restrictions. I mean, in Rome, there was, but there's, the pictures it showed were just one or two. But having said that, in Greece, there was a big demonstration, Turkey, demonstrators and actually that got quite severe um, people were being arrested you saw them being held very by the police Turkey yeah, yeah we have to watch what's happening in Turkey um, 
in Austria, Germany and Hong Kong. They were expecting major demonstrations in Hong Kong today and so all the police were out in force. But I think the uh, demonstrators realised what was going on so they postponed it for another day. Because while the, clock, uh, the lockdown's been on in Hong Kong, they have been rounding up some of the leaders. So that obviously will become a major problem again. So Hong Kong itself now has seemed to have got top of the virus and it's in control there. And another breaking news, even as we just before we came online, the mystery is now resolved. You may think, what mystery? Well, that's the mystery of Kim Yan Un, who has been disappeared for I don't know how many weeks now, but he suddenly appeared tonight. Uh, cut in some kind of in some kind of ceremony, so that is uh, kind of a lot of people thought he was dead actually. So that is a mystery which may be being solved. No doubt there'll be more of it tomorrow. But that's just happened just before we came and did our little program the night. Uh, in India, they've extended the look uh, the lockdown for two more weeks. Quite severe what's happening in India. And it's difficult to get the actual details and the notes. Now, there's a new poll. This is again an American from the um, Pew, uh, the Pew Research Center. And this no, new poll states that 25%, obviously the Americans, say faith has been strengthened during this time of lockdown. 2% weaker. The same is 47%. There's also another headline here, which is really quite an interesting one. I was thinking of maybe reading it to you. We'll see how we get on in a moment. And that is the fact of people are nervous to come out of lockdown. A high percentage of people, even if the government said the lockdown was over tomorrow, they wouldn't come out. It's almost like there has been an inculcation of faith, of fear into people and it's almost and and it's not the older people is what you would think it relates a lot to the younger ones so before we maybe we will just do that before we go to the uh, the reading of the word but let's just have a look as we always do at the actual figures for tonight and still their figures are going up same proportion i noticed uh, tonight the, the figures are 3,389,929 compared to yesterday's, which was 3,301,792, which again is another increase of 80,000, which is not quite as high as the day before, but in line with what's been happening over the last two or three weeks. Now, in the uh, the deaths, it's 239,028, but recovered, and this is now becoming more and more nearly a, a third of all cases, and the recovered is 1,076,404. And we usually look at the two countries of the states and here, and in the states, there's now 1,124,676, with 30,000 basically new cases today, total deaths of 65,000 plus, and new cases today of 1,654. But we come to the UK. Now, the UK today is 177,454 with new cases. See, this is really high, really high. 6,201. With a total deaths now of 27,510 and new deaths of 739. Now, that compares, say, with Spain, which is again introducing uh, easing lockdown restrictions. They had 281. And Italy, which has been really, really high, 269 new deaths. So the cases, for, well, the UK is double that of Spain, which was 3,600, and Italy was 1,000, well, 2,000 essentially. So that's three times more than Italy. 
So the figures are really still increasing, very much so. It's, so it's, it's quite a sad situation, really. France now has gone down to 168. So that's incredible. Um, always France was ahead of the UK. So now in order, you have the States, you have Spain, you have Italy, you have the United Kingdom is now fourth. France, Germany, who have been above Britain for a long while, are now beneath. So these are just the statistics as we have them. And as I said, I'll just, before we just move on to the word, I'll just read you that about um, the lockdown situation, which, like I say, it's sort of, uh, it's the question it was asked was, do British people still accept the lockdown? And it says, when the lockdown first started in the UK in the final week of March, there was widespread support for the measures aimed at controlling the coronavirus. But have attitudes changed? Well, this country now, and this is amazing, isn't it? Well, it's going to enter its seventh week of the greatest curbs on daily life since World War II. But many, according to the most recent polls, say they will be uncomfortable leaving home even if the government ordered the lifting of the restrictions in a month's time. More than 60% will be uncomfortable about going out to bars and restaurants or using public transport should ministers decide to relax the lockdown, a survey from Ipras Mori Poll suggested. More than 40% would still be reluctant to go shopping or send their children to school. And more than 30% would be worried about going to work or meeting friends. The vast majority of people in the UK are obeying the lockdown rules, not because they've been ordered by the government, but because they don't want to catch or spread the virus. Very few actively like being in lockdown, though. In response to a series of surveys over the last month, suggests the country has gone from apprehension at the start through to dejection as the economy shrank and the death toll mounted. People have moved on to frustration in the most recent analysis as restrictions began to grind and reality dawns as to how long they may last. And there, so I'll not read any more, but you can see there is a sense of hopelessness. And that's right, outside of Christ, there is no hope. That's what the Bible says. Um, because what is life without him? What is life without meaning and purpose? And God gives to us our meaning and our purpose. And the one thing he gives to you, and maybe I should have mentioned that in my list of the maze. I don't think I did. May the Lord give you hope. Because there is hope. That's what the Bible says. Hope thou in God. The psalmist, he says, why are you upset, O my soul? Hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him. He is my health. He is, the, he is my joy. And we can tonight. We can find our hope in God. Um, so let's turn to him. And let's turn to the word as we look at, we're looking at John chapter 3. And as we look at that, I've got a, a little illustration here tonight, which... Uh, I'll show you with this, well, some of the story anyway, some of the part of John chapter 3. Uh, an old book I used to use many years ago when um, we used to do the open air work. Yeah, in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Yeah, wow. Such a long time ago. As you can see, this book, it's really kind of old. I don't know if it's possible to get these things now. Um, sorry, I just clicked on the wrong gospel there. Okay, and so this is about a man named Nicodemus. So here we have a picture of him. Uh, just wait until you see it. A man called Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came, to, he came to speak with Jesus and he wanted to know something. And he says, my teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us because no man can do these signs 
And these signs are evidence that God is with you. Now, the interesting thing here is Jesus knew what he wanted to know. He was maybe prevaricating a little bit about what he wanted Jesus to know from Jesus. And Jesus came in straight and he said to him, he says, Jesus replied, he says, truly, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus reacted very much like people react today. He said, well, what do you mean? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? He referred to himself as an old man, didn't he? Uh, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell when it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said, really, he was saying, how are these things possible? In other words, I don't really understand what you were saying. And Jesus replied, Nicodemus, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven and is in heaven. And so the Lord Jesus began to speak to him there of an earthly birth and a physical birth. And all of us, we've all been born physically. We can pinch ourselves, yes. Oh, you feel that? Hate yourself, right? That shows that we're alive physically. But the Bible says when God made us, he made a spirit, soul and body. And because of the things we've done wrong, our spirits, the Bible says, though we, are, we have an active spirit, it's dead towards God. And what Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, he says, Nicodemus, just like you have a physical birth, so also there's going to be a spiritual, there needs to be a spiritual birth where you will receive the Holy Spirit, which he was promising to give. And then Jesus gave an example. And he said, as Moses, and I just kind of got an illustration here as well. He says, as Moses lifted up a servant of brass in the wilderness, so must also the Son of Man be lifted up and put on a cross. And uh, let's see if we see that. Let's, uh huh. There we go. So, what Jesus did then was referred Moses, uh, Nicodemus to a story in the Old Testament. Now, he was referring to the time when the Israelites, they came out of Egypt and they came with Moses and they're going to the promised land. And it was full of adventures. As we know, they went through the Red Sea, which God opened for them. They went through the wilderness. God gave them the Ten Commandments. Even when they were getting the commandments, they were disobeying them. And continually, they fought and they squabbled on the way, which was so sad. And so this journey, which had taken four or five weeks, as we know, it took 40 years. And this was the reason, because they often fought and squabbled. And so in the context of our story, the Jesus was referring to the time when they were rebelling against Moses. 
and rebelling against how he was leading them and how God was showing him things. They complained about the food that came every day from heaven, the manna, the quails. And well, at this point, it was almost like the Lord withdrew his protection and his blessing from them because they were just so rebelling against him. And so this is what happened. What happened was serpents came. Yeah, serpents came into the camp and began to bite the people. So in a sense, there was a plague, a plague of these horrible servants who began to bite the people. Now, as you can see, they uh, tried to kill them as much as they could, or they uh, would, would do, but the more they killed, like I say, the more they seemed to multiply and people were affected by them by the serpent spike because the serpent spike was poisonous if you were bitten by the serpent then you would die well when the people well when the people realized that what had happened was because of their sin and it took them a while to realize that because they didn't have a sin consciousness. And tragically, in our situation today, I mean, I don't yet perceive, not in, my, not in the UK, though there is a turning, though there is a prayer, the question of a sin consciousness, I, I don't particularly perceive it. Uh, because why? Because the foundations of sin have never been laid. People don't know what sin is now. What is sin? Doing bad things, maybe murder, but the understanding that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God is not something that is in, well, it's not in the, in the public consciousness as it used to be many years ago. And to some degree, this is, and people's hearts get hard so very, very quickly. This is really what happened. But when they began to realise that it was because of their sin, they cried out to Moses, and he says, Moses, Moses, please, we're sorry. Will you will you take away these serpents? Take away this plague. We hate this plague, Lord. So many people are dying. Lord, it's not just it's not just the grown ups, Lord, it's children too. Everybody's been affected by this plague, by this horrible contamination of the serpent's bite. So when they came out to cried out to Moses, Moses went to God and he says, Lord. The people, these serpents, please, will you just remove them? And God told Moses to do an interesting thing. He said, Moses, you see these serpents? Right. What I want you to do, right, I want you to make a serpent of bronze, of brass, right, and put it on a pole, a bit like this, a serpent on a pole, and tell the people Whoever's been bitten by the serpent, if they look on the serpent of bronze that you have put on the pole, then I will heal them. So Moses came. He told the people, he explained to them about why these things were happening because of their sin and their rejection. And this was just part of, of the consequences. He says, but God wants to heal you. So what he's told me to do, he's put, he's told me to put this bronze serpent on a pole. Now, if you've been bitten by the serpents, if you look in it, God will heal you. Well, you would think everybody would flock. Yes. Oh, whoopee, hooray, hallelujah. This is wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but you know, I'm sure it wasn't like that. No. No, because people's hearts in those days are the same as it is today. And so I kind of made up a little bit of a story on this um, as an illustration using this book. You see, obviously, some people would come. There was the serpents put on the pole. People would come and immediately they would be healed. 
but there were probably some got a chappy here there we go let's call him for the sake of illustration reuben there's reuben and his wife comes in reuben you've been bitten by the serpents oh yes well moses has put a serpent on a pole a brass serpent bronze serpent and if you look at it god will heal you oh i don't listen to that that's all religious stuff i mean i'm fed up of moses telling us following god and all this look at the mess that we're in because of what he's doing don't believe that nonsense no no come on look look you, you know your friend uh jeremiah he's been healed and, and, and uh, simeon he's been healed too oh well they're just weak-minded they're just they don't know what you're talking about look i'll get better by myself oh come on please oh come on please please reuben come on look at the sermon to brat oh go away no I think I'm, gonna be, no, I'm gonna be fine it's all just nonsense so of course as we'd understand reuben because he wasn't even willing to find out yeah not even willing to find out reuben died well i have an illustration here I use this sometimes with the young people there's a young man timothy moses comes along to timothy and he says timothy you've been bitten by the serpents why haven't you looked on the serpent of bronze i've put on the pole and, and timothy says well sir i would really like to but the problem is um well my friends they've been visiting me in this and, and i've been saying i want to go and see that serpent of bronze and they says no no don't be daft timothy you're fine you don't need to do that that's just silly come on you're gonna be fine you're a young man you're gonna get over it i really want to but my friends kind of put me off doing what i know i want to do Moses said timothy will you come if i help you yes sir please will you believe yes sir and so timothy went with moses they looked at the serpent and god healed him but as with many sometimes it's our friends who try and stop us doing what god wants us to do you know there are ways for god to heal us we declare his word we, we live in an atmosphere of worship and praise we, we seek to, to uh, envelop ourselves in the presence of god and we and, and we do what he says we praise him we rejoice in him even though we don't feel like it and we begin to declare his presence and his word it's very powerful to do what God says, to get rid of fear, to get rid of depression, to get rid of even sickness itself. So one final illustration, and this was, who oh, else an old lady here? Let's call her Matilda. I don't know if anyone is called Matilda will be looking in. Anyway, the Moses comes along to Matilda early in the morning. He says, Matilda, you've been bitten by the serpents. Uh, can I help you and take you to see the serpent of bronze that God's told me to put on the pole? And Matilda says, oh, Moses, Moses, I can go up there just now. It's far too cold. I've had such a bad night. My back was playing up, Moses. I think it's my rheumatism, my rheumatoid. Oh, I couldn't do that just now. Why don't you come back? Maybe, maybe come back about lunchtime and I'll be ready then and I'll come out then. Well, I think you should come now. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there's a nice man there's a nice man please come back later well moses comes back at um lunchtime and he says are you okay matilda can i take you now to see the serpent of bronze oh moses oh i've just had this awful headache oh dear me i have this terrible headache and you know what i think i've just stubbed my toe on the bed it really is painful and sore i couldn't come out now no well, oh, come on, said Moses, and God will heal you. Oh, no, Moses, I couldn't do that. Yes, you know, look at this now. Oh, my ear is so sore. It's going on my ear and my head. Oh, Moses, maybe later. Look, it's very important. You do what God says when he says you are to do it. Now, come on, you'll be healed and God will look after all these other things. Oh, no, Moses, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. So Moses tried to persuade her. But it was no good because she kept on making excuses and it's amazing 
how easy it is to make excuses to stop us doing what God wants us to do. Isn't that right? It is. Well, of course, sadly, in the story, when Moses came later on, poor Matilda had died. And she died because she refused to do what God was asking her to do. He gave her the opportunity, and he gave, and, but she just decided not to. Well, let's go back to what Jesus is saying to Nicodemus. And we come to the place where we come to the most famous verse in the Bible, which is what's on my tie tonight, right? And so from verse 14, as Moses lift up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And this judgment is based on this fact. God's light has come into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see what they are doing, what God wants. And just uh, before we just finish the chapter, just to clarify, you see, Moses told to lift the serpent and Jesus, he was going to be lifted up on a cross. That whoever believes, and that word is a lot meaning look, believing, to look upon him, to believe in him, to focus upon him, to receive from him. And as we'll do communion in a few moments, to see the reality of his love uh, and in, in, in our hearts, in, in, on our in, 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 with the eyes of our spirit, the spirit, we see him. We see that love that he has for us, that love for he has on the cross when he cried out, Father, forgive them. And when we look, we are healed. Here's a, a, a comparison. The Israelites, they were bitten, bitten by the serpents. The remedy was the brazen of the serpent of brass. Once they believed and they looked, they lived, they healed. The fact about you and I, this is the fact that we've been bitten. All of us have been infected with sin. We're born with sin and all of us have chosen and deliberately sinned. Because the Bible explains and the Bible explains what sin is. Not lying, not um, murder, jealousy, uh, swearing. All things of the greatest sin is not loving God with all our heart. So all of us have sinned. The remedy for you and I is to look to Jesus, to believe on him with our hearts. And as we believe, then we receive eternal life and forgiveness. And we are born again. So that's what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. To be born again, Nicodemus. You must lift up. You will see me as the Son of God who is going to die for you. And he's going to give you and offer you eternal life. Which we do believe at Nicodemus. Because when we come to the place when Jesus died, he was willing to go to Pilate and ask to be able to bury Jesus' body. So he was willing to go against the crowd because he was fearful. We read in that passage, don't we, that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he did not want his friends to see that he was associating with this imposter because that's what his colleagues were calling Jesus and many other names too. 
but he was a genuine person. He was actively seeking the truth. He was genuine. And uh, there might be somebody, you know, you may look at this later on, but you're a person who seeks the truth. And Jesus says, I am the truth. And because the Bible says people perish because they love not the truth. And if we seek him, we find him. So let's just move on and we'll finish the, the chapter now before we, because uh, Jesus carried on. And then Jesus and his disciples, they left Jerusalem. They went into the Judea countryside. Jesus spent some time with their baptizing people. And at that time, John the Baptist was baptized in the Anon near Salem because there was plenty of water there and people kept coming to him for baptism. This was before John was thrown into prison. A debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people and everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. John replied, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you, I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who is the bride. And the best man, which is like me, is simply glad to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the best man is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must increase, become greater and greater. And I must become less and less. He is from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth and we speak of earthly things. But he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. He testifies about what he has seen and heard, but how few believe what he tells them. Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true, for he is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives him the spirit without limit. The father loves the son and has put everything into his hands, and everyone who believes in God's son has eternal will never experience eternal life but remains under God's angry judgment. So these are incredible words and as we said uh, we can apply them by receiving his word, by looking on Christ again tonight as we just come to have a, a time of uh, communion in a few moments. And uh, just before we do that and before we pray about the different things, again, I came across a very old song. Well, it's not that old, but uh, and I thought this song is, is applicable tonight about God forgave my sin in Jesus name. Some of you may know it. It's uh, it goes. Let's see, I'll just turn my thing a little bit that way. Okay. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his love. As he told me to, he said freely, freely, you have received freely, freely, if go in my name and because you believe. Others will know that I live. He said, freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Go 
in my name and because you believe others will know that i live amen be born again in jesus name well we're just going to pray for the ongoing situation with the coronavirus and then we'll come and we'll just break bread and have communion together so let's pray heavenly father we just thank you for the truth of the word of god we thank you for this incredible love that we receive from you for you came not into the world to condemn the world but that the world through you might be saved and as it was in those days so it is today lord through you there is a remedy there is a rescue there is hope there is encouragement, there is joy, there is peace, salvation through you and in you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, how we cry out to you again tonight. Lord, we remember that story how the Israelites were infected with this awful plague. And Lord, they didn't understand some of them. They didn't understand why these things were happening. But Lord, when they turned to you, you gave them that understanding. And you showed them the remedy. And we know, Lord Jesus, that the remedy is you. You are the one who comforts. You are the one who forgives. You are the one who saves. And you are the one who protects. And Lord, we cry out to you tonight for that ongoing provision of your grace in this situation. Father, we see that the United Kingdom is becoming one of the worst afflicted and infected people in the whole of Europe, Lord, because of this, this awful virus, Lord. And so once again, we pray and we thank you, Lord, tonight, even tomorrow as, and as ongoing, Lord, your people are praying. And Lord, we would claim that promise that when your people pray and turn to you, then you will hear from heaven, you will forgive sin, you will heal, Lord. This is your glorious promise. And Lord, how we need that healing how we are getting such in a desperate situation, Father, for so many lives to be lost and so many jobs to be lost and so many people afflicted with mental breakdowns and suicidal thoughts and abuse, Father. It's just there before you. And we know, Lord, that you have compassion. And so we pray, Lord, how we would pray that that virus will just suddenly go in Jesus' name. But we know, Lord, those who are working on the vaccines, that, Father, that can be brought very, very quickly a successful vaccine. And this drug, this Desivera drug that they are beginning to use and others too, Lord, that again, they can be seen to be effective to control and to prevent and to destroy this virus. So we pray, we continue to pray for our health service here and abroad in the States, in other countries, Father. We continue just to pray for the leaders. We pray for our own leaders here, Boris Johnson, Nicholas Sturgeon. We pray again for President Trump and for wisdom for him, for the leaders in Europe, in India, in Africa. Father, the places where it's been more affected, Lord, we pray for Brazil too. And we know there they're having a hard time, Father. Lord, we cry out to you for your mercy and for your grace and for your healing balm. We ask it, Lord, in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to remove this slightly. And as it's come, and we come to, oops, I knocked everything down the other night, so I have to be careful. That's kind of slightly precarious. Right. So. Here we have. So, yes, just as we want to be reminded of the, uh, the Last Supper, the Passover feast, which we do remember the time when Jesus was betrayed. And as we said before he's betrayed, he took bread. And he says, this is my body which is broken for you. This do 
as you often eat it in remembrance of me. And that's what we do tonight. We remember in Jesus, remembering the fact we can just see it again behind me. Our Lord Jesus says, I am with you. I will never leave you. And so we remember in him, we remember in his promise. Tonight we're hearing his word, how he wants to give his spirit. He wants to pour out his love, his blessing upon us. So as we just take the bread, we're reminded that just before he went to the cross, his back was beaten. His back was marred more than any man would. But it was with his stripes we are healed. So, dear Lord, we thank you. Once again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you came into this world to accomplish. And we thank you that you did accomplish it, Lord, at such an incredible cost. So once again, we thank you that with your stripes, we are healed. That you bore the judgment. You bore the pain. You bore the suffering. So I pray tonight, Lord, even as we just break bread, that the, your word will enter into our hearts, the understanding that because you bore it, we don't bear it any longer. Because you took our sicknesses, we don't need any more, Lord. And we want to say for all sicknesses and diseases and viruses and illnesses to go in your name. Even as, Lord, we just break bread together and we thank you for it. So Jesus has taken me this. In the remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup and he says, this is the cup. This is my blood, which is poured out for you. And this is the greatest of all. This is the application and the remedy for our sin, for your sin and my sin. And not just for our sin, but for the sins of the whole world because of Jesus's blood. Freely for you. Jesus gives to us his life. And remember on the cross, when Jesus died, it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't a defeat. It was an incredible victory. Because the Bible says that when Jesus died, when he gave up his life, no one took it from him. He freely gave his life. And he cried out when the pain and the affliction and the consequences of our sin was dealt with, he cried and he says, it is accomplished, it is done. And then, wow, we know when we read the scripture, the incredible things that happened. And even the soldier, as he stood by and he saw it happen, cried out and he says, truly, this man was the son of God or is the son of God. So we take the cup and Lord Jesus, we thank you we thank you for your precious blood that cleanses us from every sin. Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be as snow. Red as crimson, they shall be as wool. So thank you, Lord, for taking the consequence for my sin, for the sins of those who are watching here tonight. And yes, Lord, for the sin of the whole world. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your precious blood. In Jesus' name. Amazing. Thank you. Hallelujah. So we rejoice that Jesus is alive, is risen. Hallelujah. So why don't we just sing? I was singing it before. Um, that chorus, that song, that hymn. Sing at the very beginning as we started tonight as an illustration. <laughs> Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, 
Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Amen? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, again, just we'll go and look at Psalm 91, but you know, we started this question tonight. Do you know? Amen? And if you're on the Zoom, we could all do it together. They say, do you know you've been born again? Yes. In fact, actually, I haven't got it with me, but the other verses, instead of singing, do you know that being born again, we usually sing, yes, I know that I've been born again. Yes, I know that I've been born again. For the spirit dwells within, bearing witness that I've been cleansed from every sin and stain. I am ready if the Lord should come. Or today my soul should claim I can face eternal years free from doubt and dread and fears. Yes, I know, no, no, that I've been born again. Amen. Well, I trust with all my heart that you're that too, and the assurance of Jesus' love for you, that you're rejoicing in that tonight. Well, let's just finish by reading once again Psalm 91, that wonderful psalm of protection, the wonderful psalm where we are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Okay. Those who live in the shelter or the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say about the Lord, He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He alone is my God and I trust Him. For He rescues me from every trap. He protects me from the deadly disease. He covers me with His feathers and I shelter under His wings. His faithful promises are my armour and my protection. So don't be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor for the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness or the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, and if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras, you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. Oh Lord, thank you for that promise. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will be with you in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will rescue and honour you. I will reward them. I will reward you with a long life and give them my salvation. Amen. Well, that was kind of a mixture of different verses. Versions put together. So thanks for looking in. Wow, I didn't realise it's so long tonight. But anyway, thanks for bearing with us. And I trust that you're going to have a good weekend. I'll be having a service on nine o'clock on our time on Sunday mornings. We do a family service. and But don't forget the prayer meetings tomorrow, one in the States, one here at 11 o'clock here. to be live streamed, led by David Hathaway. So God bless you. Nice to see you again. Hopefully see you, if not on Monday. Okay, good night.